Hi and welcome to my channel. For those of you new, my name is Dave and I work in financial services. And these videos are a mixture and journey towards financial freedom. They will cover financial products and they will cover financial well-being. So you, like me, can reach your aims sometime in the future. Now let's get into this latest video. This latest video is about my self-invested personal pension plan. So the review for December 2022. For those of you new to the portfolio of other videos, my plan was annual growth of 10%, annual dividends for 2022 of £4,000, and a year end value of £120,000. We look at the following chart a simple overview of what's happened to the FTSE 100 during the past 12 months. Somewhat sporadic, being up and down, shall we say, mainly in the later months because of the trustonomics and the so called mini budget. But the FTSE 100 has been one of the best performing markets in 22. It was down only 1%. And if you could do that comparison, European markets have been down about 12, 10% across the main players, Germany, France. The S&P 500 is down 15% and the Nasdaq was down over 30%. So how's that affected our portfolio? For the year to date, 2022, we made a loss of 0.93%. A quick summary of the chart there, looking at a monthly total. So, start of 2022, it was worth £99,927. Had some good months, had some bad months. And the year to date, we finished a valuation of £98,451. A loss in the month of £41. But, it just goes to show we'll have good years, we'll have bad years. Across the past seven years we've been recording our portfolio, we've made an annual return of 10.44%. So although we suffered during 2022, it could have been a lot worse, it could have been a lot better, but we increased our portfolios, we increased contributions, and we reinvested all dividends as a long-term buy and hold and plan. Now, during the month, we made normal contributions on the first of the month of £200, and it was topped up by tax relief by the government of £50. During the month, normal fees applied from our platform provider. During the month, it was £13.91. And if you look at the following chart, one of the reasons we did do well is because of where we're based. 86.44% is in the UK and Europe. 11.75% is in the USA and Americas and a small percentage 1.81% is in Asia and emerging markets. With regard to dividends during the month, some dividends were paid. We received £45.78 from Sainsbury's. We reinvested, we got 20 new shares. From BP, it gave a quarterly dividend of £26.87. Now we didn't reinvest it because of the salary of values, not worth it. And from Shell we received £30.91. So during the month, the grand total of £103.46. For the year to date, £3,315.17. And across the shares we hold, which we record dividends only, we've got a yield of 3.75. Now well, let's dive into the portfolio and see what sort of shares or shareholdings we own. Now we're predominantly UK based, predominantly share based. We own 15 shares, 8 in profit, 7 in loss, total share values of £80,230, of which 68.76% is in the FTSE 100 and 12.81% is in the FTSE 250. The total shares makes up 81.57% of our portfolio, which we pick the shares ourselves. Now, I'm not going to go through all 15 shares, but just an overview of the largest holding. Aviva, 4,320 shares, £19,000, makes up 20% of our portfolio. It's safe, secure, it's steady, it's given a yield of between 6 and 7%, has done some kind of restructuring lately, but a very long-term hold and a very good dividend payer. 
Lloyds, the banking group, we own 33,286 shares, 15,000 pounds, 15% of our portfolio, and Drax, the biomass, the, pan, the pallet maker, 1,206 shares, 8,500 pounds, 8% of our portfolio. Very good results recently, very good trading statement, is very cash rich, a long term player, shall we say. Our next holding has been very good to us in the past. It's Greg's, the retailer for the bakers, 278 shares, 6,500 pounds, 6.6% of our portfolio. It's very cash rich, it does pay a very good dividend, and since we bought it, we're up 100%. Our next holding was done for diversification away from UK banks, HSBC, 1,076 shares, 5,500 pounds, 5.6% of our portfolio. Now our next holding is one we've been increasing during the past few months, legal in general. Paying a very good yield, it was nearly 8%. We bought another 102 shares in the month, £260, and we've now got 1,937 shares, and the, put, the value cost is now £5,000. So we'll stop buying that in future, we'll reach our limit, but it is giving a very good yield, which we will be invested. We also own shares in Barclays, £4,500, 5% of our portfolio. We own JD Sports, 2,500 shares, 3% of our portfolio. And we own Sainsbury's, 1,194 shares, £2,600. Did have very good results. Did give us 20 new shares from a dividend. And probably our best two performing shares of the year have been Royal Dutch Shell, 150 shares. Three and a half thousand pounds and BP 542 shares, two and a half thousand pounds. Been very good during the year, both up over nearly 50%. Okay, but paying a very good quarterly dividend. Other companies we own is Penn and the Water Company, we own AJ Bar the drinks provider, we own AJ Bell the platform provider, and we own Card Factory the retailer. So, a collection of shares, shall we say 15 shares, 8 in profit, 7 in loss, but does pay us a very good dividend, predominantly based across obviously banks, financial services, which we know about, but all safe, secure companies, which will be here for the next 15 to 20 years, shall we say, and all the dividends will be reinvested, anything over £50 within a Pacific or the current shares we hold. Now, let's look at the funds we hold within the portfolio. Okay, we own six funds. Three in profit, three in loss. Total funds are worth £18,127. Makes up 18.43% of our portfolio. It was done because originally we were so UK fully based, individual shares. It was done for diversification and to spread risk. The funds of note, shall we say, is a legal and general technology fund, has struggled during 2022. We have actually topped up on numerous occasions. Nearly £6,000 makes up 6% of our portfolio, but it does own 261 shares within the technology sector. We own a US smaller companies fund, £3,600, 3.5% of our portfolio. Hopefully, smaller companies will outgrow larger companies, for reasons why we bought it. We own a Bally Gifford Positive Change, quite selective ESG social investing fund, £3,500, 3% of our portfolio. We own a UK equity fund, £2,500, 2% 2 of our portfolio. Has struggled during the year, does hold some very good companies, shall we say, London Stock Exchange, the Agio Rokes, all quality shares, but an excellent track record from the manager held within the fund. One fund that has struggled is a global growth fund. Nearly £2,000, 2% of our portfolio. And then down to our smallest fund, a UK smaller companies. We put £1,000 in, it's now worth £728, has struggled during 2022. But thankfully it makes up 0.07% of our portfolio. So some good funds 
some struggled funds, shall we say, because of what's happened in 2022. But we're going to hold them funds for the next three to five years. We see no reason why we should sell any of the funds. And moving forwards, we're actually going to pick a new fund. So starting from contributions in January, we're going to pick a low-cost global tracker. Something like the Fidelity World Index. It owns 3,000 shares plus. Okay, and the annual management charge around about 0.12%. But it's going to be bought for diversification because we are, shall we say, solely UK based. Now it has done well during 2022, but who knows what will happen moving forwards. So just a quick summary. We've had some good months, we've had some bad months. The portfolio is down 1% during the year, okay? hasn't met our expectations, but who could have forecast what was gonna happen during dramatic events in 2022? The Russia-Ukraine conflict, a global recession, shall we say, rising interest rates, okay? And the recovery from the pandemic, and just to add insult and injury, the so-called mini budget, which knocked everyone for six during the past few months, during 2022. Remember, it's not a get rich quick scheme. Okay, these are my own thoughts. We've received 10% over the last seven years. We'll have good years, we'll have bad years, and they're my own personal opinions. But it's done for a specific reason because I like investing, shall we say. Remember, if you like the videos, smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, and we'll see you again soon.